Good morning, everyone. This is Chuck King from Ford City, Pennsylvania on Friday, August 27th, 2021, bringing you a morning Bible study. And we are going to begin talking about lessons from Proverbs, lessons from Proverbs. And we're going to begin at the beginning in chapter one and talk about the Proverbs that Solomon has given to us from his inspiration from the Lord. First of all, we're talking about Saul, Solomon. We're talking about a man that was greatly gifted supernaturally with God's wisdom. Remember, he asked God for, for wisdom when he sought the Father's will. And God granted him wisdom beyond anyone at that time and perhaps beyond anyone except for our Lord Jesus Christ. And even though the wisdom that God gave Solomon didn't transform his life in some areas because of his disobedience, we have this grace, this gift from God, the gift of wisdom revealed to us for, for the purpose of us gaining wisdom from God. Wisdom is a supernatural ability that only comes from God. We're not speaking about worldly wisdom, the wisdom inspired by the devil and by the carnal nature. But we're talking about the wisdom that comes from the Father. And uh, this kind of wisdom is much greater than knowledge. Knowledge is one thing. Knowledge is important. But if we don't apply knowledge according to God's will, then we fail. And the wisdom that comes from God is problem-solving ability that he gives us supernatural insight to know how to apply the knowledge that he gives us. So we're going to talk about those things from Proverbs, and you can learn a lot for your practical daily walk from Proverbs. I've observed people all these years, over 50 years of ministry, and I see the persistent failures of people because they, they aren't wise in their decisions. They make decisions that are really stupid and end up reaping a harvest of confusion in their lives. And this is why we need the wisdom of God, because whatever you sow, you will reap. The decisions you make will determine the way you live, and even the outcome, the eternal outcome of your life. So let's look at parts of the Proverbs. We're not going to study everything, but I think the first few verses are very important, beginning in verse 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to discern the sayings of understanding, to receive instruction in wise behavior, righteousness, justice, and equity, to give prudence to the naive, to the youth knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase in learning. A man of understanding will acquire wise counsel. To understand a proverb and a figure, the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. So Solomon begins his Proverbs, his writing of Proverbs, by introducing us to uh, this gift that he has from God which gives him wisdom and instruction and discernment and, and causes you to walk in righteousness and justice and equity and gives prudence or, or uh, practical uh, wisdom to the naive. Even the naive can, 
can be wise, and the youth who need knowledge and discretion. Even a wise man will grow in their learning and counsel from the Lord. And we see he ends up in verse 7 by saying, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Without the fear of the Lord, without holy respect and the top priority trust in God's word, where our whole lives are focused on the fact that, that he is God and that he will determine my eternal destiny. Therefore, I respect and glorify him and walk in this fear of the Lord. And without the fear of the Lord, you can't begin to understand what is the most important thing. In fact, it's foolish to despise wisdom and instruction. And this is how Solomon introduces chapter 1 pointing us toward God's revelation of how we should live. Whether we're a young man or an old man, a young person or an old person, we need to walk in the wisdom of God. I'm going to skip down now to verse 20 uh, and the, the end cha to end chapter 1. Wisdom shouts in the street. She lifts her voice in the square. At the head of the noisy street, she cries out. At the entrance of the gates in the city, she utters her sayings. So Solomon uses, personifies wisdom. This, this revelation of God that, that is problem solving, that gives us the fear of the Lord, that, that gives us the beginning of knowledge, this ability that comes from God is shouting to us and trying to reach us. That's the, that's the picture here, that wisdom is trying to reveal uh, itself to us in the public square. Verse 22, how long, O naive ones, will you love being simple-minded? So, see, this is the problem with the human race. We don't have the wisdom of God functioning and operating in uh, among the people. And this simple mindedness and naivete is what's causing so many problems in our cultures. And the question is asked, how long will you continue to be like this without wisdom? And how long, and scoffers delight themselves in scoffing and full saint knowledge, how long Will the people refuse to receive the wisdom of God and hate his knowledge and delight rather in their own foolishness? Verse 23, turn to my reproof. Turn to my reproof or turn to my cor correction. This is what wisdom will do for us. The revelation of God will come and turn our lives around and correct us. Behold, I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you. See, the Lord wants to reveal himself to the foolish people who are, who are making so many errors in judgment and causing so much havoc on the earth because of it. He wants to reach us with his correction and with his words. Verse 24, because I called and you refused, I stretched out my hand and no one paid attention. <coughs> Excuse me, and you neglected all my counsel and did not want my reproof. I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your dread comes. When your dread comes like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, then they will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me because they hated 
knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would not accept my counsel. They spurned all my reproof, so they shall eat the fruit of their way and be satiated with their own devices. For the waywardness of the naive will kill them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But he who listens to me shall live securely and will be at ease from the dread of evil. So he, he wants to know why we won't receive his correction. He's willing to pour out his revelation, pour out his spirit on us to make his words known to us. But there's a problem here. The Lord is speaking and no one is listening. People refuse. They refuse to pay attention to what God is saying. And this is this is uh, one of the greatest disappointments and frustrations in my life and ministry that uh, preaching the word of God over and over and over and over and over again and have people simply ignore you, ignore the message, close their ears, close their eyes to the truth of the word of God. And God is saying here in Proverbs 1 that he is reaching out to us, but the people are not paying attention. They refuse to be corrected. Uh, verse 25, we've, we've neglected his counsel, didn't want his correction. So what will his response be? You see, these, these refusals to hear God and to apply his direction and counsel is the pride of carnality. And God resists the proud. When he encounters the, the proud people of this earth, he ends up opposing them because they reject him and refuse his counsel. So what does he do? Just like Psalm 2, he who sits in the heaven laughs at the plans of the wicked because Jesus is king, he is Lord, and will reign and does reign. And, and verse 26 says that God will laugh at the calamity and, and, and the failure that comes upon the people who, who scorn his correction and reject his counsel. And when all the trouble comes and judgment falls and people uh, in their desperation, after rejecting the counsel of God, after refusing to hear and receive his wisdom, after the judgment comes and people cry out for mercy, God says, they will call on me and I will not answer. They will seek me diligently but won't find me. Why? Verse 29, because they hated knowledge and the fear of the Lord. They wouldn't accept his counsel. They rejected and spurned his correction, his reproof. And so, verse 31, very clearly, is sowing and reaping. They will eat the fruit of their own way and be satiated with their own devices. Whatever you sow, you will reap. Because this waywardness, this disobedience, this rejection of the revelation of God's wisdom and knowledge will cause the naive to be destroyed. The foolish will be destroyed because they reject the revelation of God. But finally, verse 33, but he who listens to me, the one who receives God's revelation of wisdom and knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the one who listens to me shall live securely and will be at ease from the dread of evil. So there you have the principle of sowing and reaping so clearly revealed to us in Proverbs chapter 1 concerning the different responses that people have, whether or not we will receive the revelation of God, his wisdom and knowledge that causes the fear of the Lord to increase in our lives, that causes our lives 
to be directed by his his problem solving supernatural ability or whether we will be people who reject and spurn his counsel and continue to live in the pride of our flesh and destroy ourselves. How are we going to respond? Are we going to respond to seek the Lord and receive his wisdom, to receive his supernatural revelation that will help us to solve all of the issues that we face in our lives and live securely. If we obey him, if we listen to him, we will live securely and be at ease from any dread of evil. There will be no fear of evil when we have the fear of the Lord because of his wisdom in our lives. That's a powerful message from Proverbs 1 today. We'll continue with lessons from Proverbs tomorrow. God bless.